Any fifth generation fighter can fly an impressive air show, particularly one that's clean in a non-combat configuration. On the other hand, the Super Hornet is a true fifth generation multi-role, multi-mission aircraft. And in this demonstration, fully loaded with two tanks, two JSAO, two AIM-120s and two AIM-9s, 6,500 pounds of external stores, the aircraft will fly a demonstration showcasing its impressive maneuvering abilities. This is done without any AOA limits, no stick limits, no maneuvering limits, and no throttle limits of any kind. Moreover, the agility of the aircraft is not compromised with this impressive loadout. The result is pitch rates, roll rates, and yaw rates in a demonstration that most would believe would only be capable in an aircraft with thrust vectoring. This flight demonstration starts with an extremely short takeoff roll. The aircraft is able to lift off the ground in as short as a thousand feet. Shortly after takeoff, the nose is brought abruptly upwards to 40 degrees of pitch, and then a 360 degree roll is flown with the gear down. This is to demonstrate the excellent flying qualities of the airplane, even with the gear down and the excellent carefree handling, even in this fully loaded configuration. Shortly after the gear is raised, to demonstrate the high thrust to weight ratio, the aircraft nose is brought into the vertical for a half cubin eight. An over the top maneuver is flown to a 50 degree nose low position and then rolled out upright again. From a 50 degree dive, which is to simulate an air to ground attack, the nose is brought abruptly upwards to demonstrate the high instantaneous pitch rate that is available. Then from very low speed, the authority of the pitch system to bring the nose down rapidly is demonstrated. Recovering from the nose high condition, a 360 degree roll is flown to demonstrate the high roll authority, even with this high roll inertia of all the weapons on the wings. Following the low speed roll, I reposition the airplane. This is to simulate a very tight re-attack, even with all this ordnance on board, never straying very far from the observer. Accelerating under the re-attack maneuver to 300 knots, the aircraft is pulled into the vertical and 5,000 feet is attained directly over the field. From there, full lap stick is pulled, 38 to 42 degrees angle of attack is achieved, and then full lateral stick and full pedal are applied to invoke a special flight control logic called the pirouette gains. This allows the airplane to roll and yaw in what appears to be a thrust vectoring maneuver that looks like a helicopter guns attack or even a spin to some observers. On recovery, the aircraft enters a 360 degree turn in front of the observer to show the tight turning radius and high turn rate available even with the aircraft loaded with all these weapons. Following the 360 degree turn, still at high G, full aft stick is applied for maximum G, then lateral stick is inputted to demonstrate a high G rolling maneuver to upright. Once upright, full forward stick is now applied at high speed to show the nose down pitch rate that can be attained with as much as minus three G's in a fully loaded airplane. The instantaneous pitch rates, nose up and nose down, are very similar for a loaded or clean airplane. In the rudder roll maneuver, angle of attack is increased from 25 to 30. A full boot of pedal is applied and the aircraft rolls and yaws about 180 degrees to nose low. This once again demonstrates the high agility of the airplane even at high angle of attack to roll and yaw simultaneously. An important feature of any fighter attack airplane, especially for pilots, is the ability to fly at very low speed. This next maneuver demonstrates the extreme range from both high speed to now very low speed high angle of attack flight. The aircraft remains very docile, very easy to fly, even at 30 degrees angle of attack and at roughly 105 knots. Following the high angle of attack, low speed pass, the nose is brought down and now the aircraft accelerates while turning in its re-attack for the next maneuver. This demonstrates the high piece of S and high thrust of the airplane and its ability to accelerate in a turn loaded with weapons. 
The digital flight control system is extremely robust and mature and allows for aggressive maneuvering by the pilot regardless of his inputs. Now at 350 knots, the airplane rolls demonstrate its high-speed rollability before entering the square loop. The square loop begins with a high g-pull of the vertical, then a high rate of climb given its high thrust to weight ratio, even fully loaded, then a full aft stick is applied to inverted flight demonstrating once again another high turn rate, high pitch rate square turn. From inverted flight, with full confidence in the aircraft and the flight controls, full aft stick is applied. This brings the airplane straight down, now attaining extreme dive angles at very low altitude. The maneuver is completed with a definitive square turn recovery that no other aircraft can do, especially one loaded with ordnance. The loaded roll once again demonstrates the high agility of the airplane, even fully loaded with weapons. 30 degrees angle of attack is achieved, full lateral stick and full pedal is applied for a full 360 degree roll while the aircraft rolls, yaws, and pitches. Once upright, full aft stick is applied, and then full forward stick is applied, demonstrating the turbo nose down flight controls, which allow the airplane to recover at very high nose down pitch rates. A demonstration such as you just seen would not be complete without some discussion of some of the features of the airplane you didn't see. For example, the aircraft has reconfigurable flight controls that would allow it to recover following a major system loss throughout any point in the demonstration. For example, a hydraulic system loss, or a flight control hard over, or even an engine loss would not result in the loss of an aircraft or the aircraft going out of control. This allows any pilot to fly this airplane with full confidence in the flight control system and to maneuver the airplane to its maximum extent even at low altitude. All of the handling qualities which make it an excellent aircraft for flying and landing at the ship. Low approach speed, excellent lateral directional handling qualities, and heavy duty landing gear make it an extremely robust airplane that could be flown virtually anywhere in the world.